one moment from the presidential debate between Trump and Biden stood out to me. It's this moment where uh, Chris Wallace is going to ask Trump if he condemns white supremacists. But are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups and to say that they need to stand down and not add to the violence in a number of these cities as we saw in Kenosha and as we've seen in Portland? Sure, are you prepared willing to, to do that? Okay, so the reason this moment stands out to me is because to me it seems like a kind of brazen example of Chris Wallace uh, being on the other side of him attacking rhetorically Donald Trump. And the way he does this is he associates white supremacists and white nationalists with Donald Trump by asking Trump to condemn them. Why else would Trump need to be the one to condemn white supremacists unless there was some association between white supremacists and Trump? And that's what Chris Wallace is doing to the viewer by asking Trump to condemn them. You know, why not ask Joe Biden to condemn white supremacists or ask him to condemn uh, international drug traffickers or human smugglers? I think. Um, most people would expect that it would go without saying that, yes, you generally condemn bad people. And so by Chris Wallace saying, are you willing tonight, sir, to condemn white supremacists? What he's doing is just making it seem like Trump has some special need or reason to do so. Uh, and, and that's why I say it's a rhetorical attack. It's Chris Wallace coming in on, on Biden's side in order to make Trump look bad. And another thing that you can notice Chris Wallace doing is he conflates white supremacists with a few other groups. And you can notice not only Chris Wallace doing this, but also Joe Biden. So Chris Wallace there is saying white supremacists and right wing militia. But, you know, wait a second. Right wing militia are different than white supremacists. Um, militia are organized groups of, of men and women who um, want to form an association to protect their rights through force if necessary. Uh, and a right wing militia is conservative, but it's not um, white supremacist. And that's a kind of broader rhetorical attack from Chris Wallace. He's not only trying to associate white supremacy with Donald Trump, but he's just associating it with right wing in general. And to me, that's kind of odd because I don't know much about Chris Wallace, but I know he's an anchor from Fox News. And when I think of Fox, I think right wing, the right wing perspective or news um, news site. And so for Chris Wallace to be the one associating uh, right wing militia with white supremacy, uh, that strikes me as very odd and, and unexpected. And it makes me wonder, you know, why is he doing this? And it's a conflation of white supremacists are a very different thing. They're people who, you know, believe in the superiority of their own race. They're white people who believe that. Um, and who want to dominate other races or destroy other races or kill people for being the wrong race. Um, whereas a right-wing militia is a group that wants to protect their gun rights or their right to free speech. Or maybe they just like, uh, you know, getting together um, with their friends and, and having a romp in the woods or something or, or shooting guns. You know, a right-wing militia is nothing about white supremacy. Um, and so Joe Biden is kind of chiming in here. I think he's gleeful, uh, glad that Chris Wallace is attacking Trump for him. And he's chiming in here to say the Proud Boys, condemn the Proud Boys. But again, this is another conflation. Um, the Proud Boys aren't white supremacists. Um, in general, I, I tend to think that if you're going to call somebody a name, you should um, expect that they will agree with that label. So I don't think it would be fair to call Bernie Sanders a communist. Um, and the reason I don't think it's fair to say that is because I don't think he would agree with it. 
I think it's it's almost the definition of how you can tell if you're just insulting someone or if you're being fair, you can ask, would they agree with the label I'm using? You know, I don't think Bernie Sanders wants to uh, radically restructure our society such that communes of people control the means of production and the distribution of scarce resources. I don't think that's what Bernie Sanders wants to do. I think so. So because I don't think that, I think it would be wrong to call him a communist. You know, I think it would be more appropriate to say he's a democratic socialist um, and that what he's interested in is uh, expanding our welfare state or raising taxes on the wealthy and things like that. Um, and so the reason why I'm, I'm kind of bringing up that example is, you know, I want to ask, do you think the Proud Boys would call themselves white supremacists or would they agree with that label? Um, so, you know, I, I looked up the Proud Boys websites to see if they would agree with that. Um, and in some sense, you know, it's difficult if you search for Proud Boys, um, if you search for Proud Boys, you get results like uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center, ADL, the Anti-Defamation League, Wikipedia. Okay, thanks. Um, far right neo-fascist. <laughs> Uh, that's interesting. I'll talk about that in a second, I guess. Um, you get the New York Times, whatever, you know, like Washington Post, LA Times. The point I'm making is what you emphatically do not get on the first page, second page, um, third page, fourth page. What you aren't getting is, oh, okay, fourth page. You aren't getting their website. And in fact, I'm not even sure that officialproudboys.com is their website. Normally, if I were Googling for a group, I would kind of trust that Google's first result um, would give me that group's website, especially if it looked like a legitimate website. Uh, but with the Proud Boys, I have no idea if I'm going to their website or if I'm going somewhere else um, to some other website uh, because Google has kind of decided that you don't get to see the Proud Boys website. This is information that Google doesn't want to give you when you make a search. And that's why instead what Google returns for you is, um, you know, the list of all those news articles condemning them and, you no know, Proud Boys are evil and bad and whatever. Um, but on their, on their website, uh, or what may be their website, or what may be a random website on the fourth page of Google, um, you can see the tenets of the Proud Boys, officialproudboys.com. Who are they? And one of their tenets is anti-racism, which it would be a strange tenet for a white supremacist group to have. Um, and you'll notice in their other tenets, um, perhaps there are things you disagree with. I think venerating the housewife might be, um, might be uh, what's the word, a kind of lightning rod for disagreement from the left-wing perspective, perhaps. Um, I think reinstating a spirit of Western chauvinism, that might be a, a um, controversial point. But they don't say anything like, like um, white people are the best race or we've got to get rid of non-whites. They don't have anything like that here. Um, so I don't see, I don't see, rather I should say, I wouldn't expect that they would agree with the label white supremacists. And so how can you just uh, tell people that they are white supremacists, especially when one of their um, core tenets is anti-racism? We don't believe in racism. Um, another website I found, proudboyusa.com, tenets, lists, pretty much the same thing, including anti-racism. So I don't know how you can say you're white supremacists. I expect very few white supremacist groups have the core value anti-racism. Um, and one thing you know that stood out to me uh, just a second ago when, when we were Googling Proud Boys is this description of them as a neo-fascist. Um, I am not super familiar with the Proud Boys, uh, or fascism. But to my understanding, uh, fascism is um, the, the how do you say it, the third path or the, or the third way, kind of a compromise between capitalism and communism, where you have the state direct 
um, a largely free market. Um, and like that's kind of the economic idea of the of fascism to my knowledge um and i don't think that that is is something the proud boys are interested in or trying to advocate for i've not seen the proud boys uh say anything that's a a fascist um a fascist argument so it's it's uh it's very odd to me that oh okay they they link to a Mother Jones news article, New York Daily News, another journal, and Slate to support the claim neo-fascist. I'll have to dig into that to see if I agree with neo-fascist, but to me it seems a lot more like what we were just talking about with white supremacists. I doubt the Proud Boys would agree that they are neo-fascists. Uh, and yeah, it... it um, it seems highly unfair, um, in my mind, to conflate these groups. Sir, do you condemn white supremacists? Uh, yes, I do. Sure, I'm willing to do that. Uh, I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't have said it that way. Trump didn't say yes, I do. He said sure, yes, I'm willing to condemn them. And they said, okay, sir, do you condemn uh, white supremacists and right wing militia? Like you, you can't make that conflation, Chris. And Joe Biden jumps in and says, Proud Boys. Well, the Proud Boys aren't really white supremacists. They're a group that's been fighting um, Antifa or left-wing protesters. Uh, that's true. But they aren't... Um, I, I think it's an overreach to say they are white supremacists. They aren't saying that about themselves. And I don't think you've really put together a compelling reason to think they are. I think it's much more likely that they're just people who like to fight with um, other people in the street. Um, yeah, so that's that's kind of the core problem I have with this moment. And if you'll notice, you know, Trump, I don't know if Trump knows who the Proud Boys are. I, When I saw this moment in the debate, I assumed he did. Um, but now I hear him saying he doesn't know who they are, so I don't. I don't know at this point, but Trump just kind of says, you know, stand back and stand by. And the reason why I assumed he did know who the Proud Boys were is because he's he's not condemning them. Um, he's just saying, you know, like, oh, stand back, stand by. You might have to fight Antifa or something because nobody else is doing it, apparently, in the in the West Coast. Um, so that's why I that's what I assumed Trump was was trying to say. But it uh, yeah, it stands out to me that Chris Wallace is making this rhetorical attack by requiring Trump to uh, condemn the white supremacists. So I'm going to flip over, you know, while I was thinking about this moment and what I wanted to say, I kind of drew out this diagram. You know, it's this rhetorical attack. Um, and the core of the attack is that you can either choose to say, yes, I condemn white supremacists. In which case, you know, one, you're just you're already losing because you're kind of creating that association or you're agreeing with the frame of the question that, yeah, you are somehow responsible for or associated to or linked with white supremacists. And so when you say I condemn them, you're just reinforcing that in people's mind. Um, and that's why they're asking you to do it, because you really have two options. One is to condemn them. And the other is to not condemn them. And both of those options are bad. Um, so that's, you know, that's why it's kind of a, a trap or a trick. And that's why they're asking the question. Um, and I think the fact that they have Chris Wallace ask that question is kind of revealing um, to the audience about uh, where Chris Wallace stands and what he's doing moderating the debate. Is he really trying to be fair? if he's posing questions like this to Trump and not really at all to Biden. Um, so, you know, I had this thought, like, what should you do if you're Trump and you get asked this question? Um, really, there's no good move, I feel, because, uh, like I was just saying, anything you can do is going to work out poorly. So, you know, if I were Trump, what I would try to do is just... Uh, make a quick condemnation, say, sure, I condemn white supremacists, condemn them totally. 
I've condemned them many times in the past. Happy to do it again. Um, and then, you know, I'd try to pivot to talk about Joe Biden. I'd say, I'm oh, sorry, excuse me, before I tried to pivot to talk about Joe Biden, what I'd want to do is call out to the audience what was happening. I'd say, I condemn them, condemned them many times before. I'm sure I'll be asked to do it again, but I want to let the audience know that our moderator, our supposedly impartial moderator, is trying to associate me with white supremacists just by asking this question and just by putting this on me. Of course I condemn them. Who wouldn't? Obviously I condemn white supremacists, but Chris Wallace thinks it's going to be a big deal and that he's got to ask me about it. And so what I want to ask the audience is if they realize how biased this is and how unfair it is that the moderator is trying to make me look connected to white supremacists. Then I'd try to pivot and turn to Joe Biden and I'd say, you know, there's absolutely no reason to think I wouldn't condemn white supremacists. Um, but what I'm interested in is, will Joe Biden condemn white supremacy? Will he condemn the KKK? Because Joe Biden's uh, friend and mentor in politics uh, Robert Byrd was a, a grand cyclops of the KKK, and Joe Biden was connected to him. So, you know, it doesn't surprise me. Joe Biden said he was a, a Democrat leader. It doesn't surprise me that he's intimately connected to the KKK. Um, but it does kind of surprise me that we haven't heard him condemning the KKK more, given his connections to the KKK. Um, and I, I don't think something like that is fair. I, you know, I wouldn't want to say it. But if people are going to make these same kind of spurious connections and arguments about you um, and kind of, you know, this um, unfair rhetoric or dirty fighting, if they're going to do that to you, you might as well hit back at them uh, the same way. Um, you know, it is true that Joe Biden knew or news knew excuse me, <laughs> knew this guy, Robert Byrd, who was a grand cyclops of the KKK. Um, so, you know, why not ask him about it if they're going to ask you to condemn white supremacists every other time you get up to speak um, and then and then cry about your answer? Um, so I, I don't know how well that would work out. I'm not a politician. I've never, never really... Um, <laughs> never really debated anybody, so I don't know if that, you know, a reply like that would be appealing to anyone uh, other than myself. But you know, maybe that's something. Maybe that's some kind of approach. Uh, and then turn from you know, we don't always have to be talking about the KKK or white supremacists. Um, turn from talking about that to, you know, okay, uh, I'm sure I'm sure Joe Biden, you know, probably doesn't want to confer. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sure Joe Biden probably doesn't want to condemn his friend, um, the KKK member, influential KKK leader. I'm sure he probably doesn't want to condemn that guy. So, you know, we can move on and we can ask Joe, you know, he's the leader of the Democratic Party. Is he willing to condemn the street violence from the left wing protesters uh, who have, you know, been responsible for looting and riots that have gone on for 100 days and that have killed 30 people? Is Joe Biden willing to condemn those people if he's not willing to condemn the KKK. And, you know, just kind of hit them with your own unfair attacks. If if the situation is going to be so unfair that the moderator is going to jump in um, to hit you with a this kind of rhetorical trap of connecting you to white supremacists. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how well that would work out. Maybe it would, or maybe it uh, maybe it would sound dumb, and everyone would get mad about it. Um, the other other point I was going to bring up here is just how people are reacting to it on Twitter. So just searching through Twitter, the Trump white supremacist, I noticed um, Elizabeth Warren commenting, "He didn't just refuse to disavow them; he asked them to stand by." Donald Trump is a white supremacist. And we have a moral obligation to fight back. That's from Elizabeth Warren. So he didn't just refuse to disavow them. Well, <laughs> that's not true. He said he would disavow them. He said, sure, I'm willing to disavow white supremacists. And they said, okay, will you disavow the Proud Boys? And he said, stand back and stand by. Um, so it's just not the case that Trump refused to disavow 
uh, white supremacists. He said he would, uh, and he has multiple times in the past. Um, other, you know, other people tweeting about this. NPR uh, is calling the Proud Boys the white supremacist group. Um, <laughs> Trump doesn't know who the Proud Boys are. Politico's commenting about Trump's shout out to the white supremacist group Proud Boys. Um, let's see if there's more tweets about this. I expect there will be. The Guardian, I'm sure they have a fair uh, summary. Um, Trump's re-election strategy is torn from white supremacist playbook. Okay, that's not <laughs> that's not uh, not exactly what I thought it would be. Um, yeah, white supremacist organizations are reveling in the support of the president today. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I mean, this is kind of a no-name organization. I've never heard of them before. But uh, um, my, my general point here is that people are taking it kind of the way I was explaining, explaining that there is an association between Trump and white supremacists. Um, and they're saying, you know, this is a random person with no likes. Trump's refusing to condemn white supremacists. And I just don't think that's true. I think he was, he agreed, he's willing to condemn white supremacists. As I mentioned, he's condemned them before. Um, this is, um, if it would. Condemn in the strongest possible terms. This egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence, it has no place in America. And as I have said many times before, no matter the color of our skin, we all live under the same laws. We all salute the same great flag. And we are all made by the same almighty God. We must love each other, show affection for... Okay, I thought he was going to say something more direct about condemning white supremacy there. Um, Yeah, my my point is that there are multiple examples. I just found these by Googling Trump condemns uh, white supremacy. There are multiple examples of him, or I guess in this case, by Googling Trump find people both sides. There are multiple but examples. You're changing history, you're changing culture, and you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. <laughs> uh, you know, Trump... Trump repeatedly says we should condemn white nationalists and white supremacists totally and when he says that people ignore him and they you know it kind of builds in their mind that trump is associated with white supremacists why else would he have to be condemning them all the time um, when he doesn't say that exact language people like elizabeth warren you know jump out of the uh what's the phrase they jump out from the woodworks to say ah trump dis doesn't condemn them he is a white supremacist how terrible how evil um so yeah let me let me see if there's anything else i want to say uh he did agree to he has multiple times proud boys aren't white supremacists i think i covered that uh yeah google hides the info they don't want you to see um you know, I, I I mentioned that, or I think I I think I showed that um, when I Google searched the Proud Boys, um, and I guess maybe the final thing I'll say is just how alarming it is to me that um, you know Google, which has such a powerful role in the national, I think the word is zeitgeist. Um, let's let me see my own vocabulary lesson for the day. Um, zeitgeist isn't what I was looking for. Um, in kind of our, our psyche, I guess, that, you know, Google kind of controls what we think or know and what information we have access to. And so the fact that Google is willing to say, we're going to get involved in a political uh, discussion and we're going to bury evidence that people might like to see. So they're hiding uh, the Proud Boys website. Um, you know, if I search for uh, some group, even if it's an advocacy group, 
I'd expect for that group to be in the top result, if, especially if it's a well-named, well-named, well-known group, like I think the Proud Boys certainly are. Um, but Google is kind of actively taking an interest against that. They're, they are preventing you from, from finding information out, and they're pointing you to, um, I think, what you could call the ideological enemies of the group. Um, and the ideological allies of Google when you try to search for them. I want to know more about the Proud Boys. Oh, hey, would you like to see a hundred links from people who think they're evil, terrible, neo-fascist, white supremacist, etc.? And then, you know, buried on page four, a link to what may be their official website. Um, and, and, you know, the reason that this is a problem, it's not really, not really about the Proud Boys per se, who, as I mentioned, to my knowledge, are mainly a group about uh, like street fighting and, you know, kind of boys club or, or club for men, I suppose. Um, but the point is that Google has this massive influence and control over what people think and know, and they are explicitly showing us that they're willing to be partisan about it and that they are going to say, we know what people should think, and we're going to hide information that disagrees with that, um, even if it's firsthand, direct from the source, um, really relevant information. Like in my case, I just want to know, do the Proud Boys uh, think that other races are inferior? You know, can I just look up their website um, and see if they think that? <laughs> And Google saying, no, 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 you don't, you don't get to see that. You don't get to see what they say. You have to read what the SPLC says or what the ADL says or what um, Wikipedia has quoted a dozen <laughs> random news articles as saying, that's where you have to get your information from. You can't, you know, hear it from the horse's mouth, so to speak. And the reason that's so dangerous, you know, ultimately, who cares about the Proud Boys? They could go away tomorrow and... I don't think it would be a major loss. But what I do care about is that Google's influence extends, you know, not just beyond these uh, uh, groups like the Proud Boys, but it extends all over, all across our life. And we know that Google has political interests. Um, so in what other ways does Google um, put their thumb on the scales of the election? And in what other ways do they drive political outcomes that they are interested in? All right, I think I've kind of rambled uh, long enough. I was originally intending, uh, believe it or not, for this to be a 10-minute video. I was kind of hoping to contrast it from the video I put out yesterday, uh, where I think I spoke for an hour. Um, I hope I didn't go on quite that long this time. Um, but, yeah, um, <laughs> I mean, this, this style of video, one, is a lot easier to produce than the um, more researched and edited videos that I've created previously. Um, and yeah, it's a lot easier to produce. And if I'm honest, I kind of like just uh, rambling in front of the microphone. Um, so I guess I'm going to probably try to do a little more of this. Um, if anyone made it this far, say something to let me know you did in the comments. Um, click the like button if you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more content like this, you can go ahead and subscribe. Uh, thanks for your time. Bye-bye.